Boots versus Bud. Jerron Boots Ennis versus Terrence Bud Crawford. Knuckleheads, this is the fight that the boxing public is clamoring for subsequent to the one-sided drubbing that Terrence Crawford issued to Errol Spence Jr. a couple weeks back. A lot of people don't want to see the rematch, even if it's at 154 pounds, because they feel like they've already seen what's going to happen, considering the domination that Terrence Bud Crawford showed us in that fight. He's just on another level boxing-wise. And so a lot of people think, hey, let's give Boots Ennis a try, man. Nothing's going to change if we put Errol Spence in there. Again, even if it's at 154 pounds, nothing is going to change. And so I wanted to discuss with you guys who I think wins a fight between Terrence Bud Crawford and Boots Ennis if that fight happens. Now, of course, I may not have a lot of people that are fans of my opinion, but that's why we have the channel to discuss, to debate, to argue, and to insult each other. I'm just kidding about that one. But you know, you know what I'm talking about. So first and foremost, you know, you just got to look at their past performances. And that's what I'm basing my opinion on. We're looking at Terrence Bud Crawford, who in the biggest fight of his boxing career, did the best he's ever done and seems to be continuing to improve at the age of 36. I mean, that was just absolutely perfect. That performance was phenomenal. For someone to do that in the most anticipated fight in the welterweight division between two pound-for-pound -pound fighters in probably a decade or more was just superb, supreme, supreme. And so you look at that last fight, you compare it to Jerron Boutsenis, right? Terrence Crawford dominated Errol Spence Jr., a pound-for-pound -pound guy. And Jerron Boots Ennis knocked out Royman Villa. Now, no disrespect to Royman Villa, you know what I mean? And no disrespect to Boots Ennis. He did what he was supposed to do against this kid who's a big, strong kid. Villa's a big, strong kid. But he doesn't have the boxing know-how, the boxing ability or technique not even close of a guy like Terrence Crawford or Errol Spence. Via is a big, strong brawler <clears throat> that walks you down and tries to bomb you out of there. And I will say this about him too. He hit Jerron Ennis a lot in that fight. I mean, he was connecting and landing a lot of shots. And they weren't just shots that he was coming in there and throwing carelessly. He was landing some counters. He was timing Ennis. Uh, he was catching him as he was pulling out. And so <clears throat> it made me feel in watching that fight, watching the fight before it, right, where Ennis was fighting this Russian guy, I forgot his name, that was basically, you know, running around the whole time and, and, and Ennis just couldn't catch him. And of course, that was a very one-sided fight too. But the Roy Monvia performance, right, really made me feel like Ennis is not at the level that people were making him out to be a couple fights ago. If Roy Monvia can land that many shots against you, you are in big, big trouble against a guy like Bud Crawford who could fight on the inside, who's also very strong, who could fight at mid-range, who could counter you to death. You know, I feel like it would be... I feel like the fight would not finish, right? It would not go to the judges. I feel like after watching that performance, Terrence Bud Crawford would finish Jerron Boots Ennis, finish him. The other thing is, you know, and a lot of people may disagree with this, but, uh, you know, obviously Coach Derek Collinsworth, who's my guy, he always brings it up. You had Bo Mack bring it up in an interview. The way Ennis stands, right, his legs are pretty wide. Not as maybe not as wide as Spence's, but comparable. And he's very front footed. And I feel like that would be hugely problematic against a guy like Terrence Crawford because when you're in that position, you know, you don't really, you're not really utilizing your range. Um, and Terrence Crawford is a master at that. And if you think you're going to sit there and out athlete Terrence Crawford and, and, and use your athleticism, to negate his boxing ability and his understanding of range and his countering and everything else, well, you also have to think about his athleticism too. And I just I just don't see it happening for Jerron Boots Ennis at all. And I'll go as far as to say this, and I'm sure this is going to be an unpopular opinion with a lot of people. 
After watching Jerron Boots Ennis' performance against Roy Monvia, for me, he's at the same level right now as a Virgil Ortiz and as a Imantas Ima- Ima- uh, Stanionis, I believe that's how you say it, Stanionis. I don't think he's showed me anything, and I don't think he's fought anyone for me to say this guy's going to go up there and give Terrence Bud Crawford a good fight. Now, a lot of people think he's the next guy in line, which he just may be. He may be that next guy in line. And listen, a part of me hopes that Terrence Bud Crawford, who's already unified welterweight, will move up to 154 pounds and try to unify up there, maybe give Errol Spence a rematch, go after Charlo, whatever it is he wants to do, so that 147 can be vacated for these new, young, fresh guys to, to, to go at it and figure it out. But I do think at this point, if you watch that Roy Monvilla fight, and you're telling me he's a clear winner over Virgil Ortiz and Imanta Stenionis, you're going to have to do more convincing than that for me. I think if a guy like Roy Monvilla can hit Jerron Ennis that much, then a guy like Virgil Ortiz can hit him more. Then an educated guy like Stenionis can hit him more. And so I think those are the fights to make at welterweight. I want to see those three guys fight each other. Again, Ennis... Stanionis and um, Ennis Stanionis and Ortiz. Those are the guys I want to see fight at welterweight. I think, again, knuckleheads, if Terrence Bud Crawford fights Jerron Ennis now, he wipes him out. And he wipes him out in devastating fashion. That's my opinion. I don't think the fight goes past 10 rounds. No way. Um, so that's my opinion on that. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Like, subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Help uh, join the channel to help me build. Any merchandise you buy in the link below also helps me continue to build. And don't forget, Fighters Rep 19, our most stacked card ever live from the Commerce Casino in Los Angeles. We're sitting at like 18 fights right now. Card subject to change. But it's going down September 9th. Get your tickets at fightersrep.com. And you can watch the, the event live by joining the channel just $9.99 a month. I look forward to hearing what you guys have to say about this. Because... Um, I'm standing on this one, man. This, th- this one I think is going to be a bit controversial, but I'm standing on this one.